All right, during these times, we needed to turn to a great friend of the show to talk to us about the response of congressional Democrats and also the Republican saga. Yeah, that's right. So we, we thought we'd turn to the all-star Michael Brooks, host of the Michael Brooks Show himself. Good to see you, Michael. How are you? How are you enjoying self-quarantine? Great to see you guys. Um, I'm glad that some of the episodes of Curb uh, hold up. And uh, <laughs> I mean... Right. All right. Well, let's take, take a lot there. of Michael, guns yeah. yeah. Michael, one thing we really wanted to get your take on here was about the ongoing developments on the bailout and the response to that. So we're seeing right now Nancy Pelosi reject a universal program in terms of cutting checks to Americans, while Republicans, you know, much to my benefit and happiness, is are the ones who are leading the way on that front. What do you make of that um, from that corporate Democratic angle and what do you think that what political implications does that have for right now and for the future what do you think well it's the same dynamic we see playing out again and again and again because let's broaden it out a little bit the best and most comprehensive proposals are coming from people like bernie sanders and ilan omar and tulsi gabbard in fact the most generous most universal most serious then we have a democratic leadership that as someone who has no respect for them and knows that they're my political opponents from the left, I am stunned. Like, I think their political forebears like Tony Blair, Bill Clinton would never allow themselves to get outmaneuvered like this ever. I'm, I, 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 I think means testing is a literal addiction. Um, the idea of trying to put out like a FAFSA form to have people sign out in this moment right. of crisis is it's immoral, it's strategically demented, and it's, uh, you know, economically catastrophic. Now let's break mm -hmm. up the Republicans. I think, you know, look, Mitt Romney, that's a big headline because it's Mitt Romney. He's a classic vulture capitalist country club guy. He's, you know, one hit of a thousand bucks is better than nothing, but let's not overdo it. And we still got mm -hmm. Sass and Rand Paul and these guys who still just know that in an ideological cul-de-sac. And then I think we decide need to be really serious about this. You have an opportunistic far right who is much more willing to challenge economic orthodoxy than the Democratic Party. And that's enormously dangerous. We need to be meeting them and exceeding them to the left on economic policy and making a compelling and coherent alternative case on pluralism and openness, which I think will win if it's made in the in the affirmative. But if it's just austerity and sort of signifying concern, it's a political disaster. I really thought, honestly, I thought the way Trump handled this and the criminal negligence around it, which I would call criminal negligence, no doubt, I thought 72 hours ago, wow, he finally has done it. The luck's run out. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a body blow. We're going to have a major recession and a serious public health crisis because this idiot couldn't even acknowledge the severity of it a couple of months ago, right? And now with him ending evictions and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, almost like as characters from a horror, horror film, talking this thing, whatever, they might actually do this. And it's... It's political malpractice of a historical order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and let's talk about our Democratic frontrunner, presumptive nominee. I mean, yeah, he's he's out there cosplaying commander in chief. What is he actually proposing? I mean, I haven't seen anything from him that is remotely up to the size and scale of the challenge. And if he wins in November, which I think with this crisis, he certainly it's possible he could. Um, is he remotely up to the task of what's going on right now? Well, I think that what we have to look at, you know, from my perspective, right on the left is you, you, in a way, if you're competing against a dead center represented by Biden and Pelosi, and then you're competing against an insurgent extreme right, uh, which has some very negative and detrimental policies that we oppose. In some ways, like when I look at Biden, I'm almost like, sure go into office for a couple of years because you literally have no project. You're utterly exhausted and there's going to be room yeah. to compete against you. You know, like I, so look, I have no doubt that if Joe Biden's president, uh, you know, you don't get rid of the pandemic preparedness, you know, uh, uh, 
whatever it was that Trump got rid of. Our that in functioning of things, obviously the Obama administration and Biden would likely be better in. Now, conversely, it is stunning to watch, and Ilan Omar tweeted this out yesterday. She was like, look, politics is, and she tweeted out Trump's banning of foreclosures. Like anybody that has any sense of a pulse of what's actually happening in this country understands that all of these things need to stop immediately. And then we look at Denmark, we're seeing, you know, the government come in significantly radically to take ownership and protect jobs. That's what needs to happen. And it's a Mm -hmm. political catastrophe that elements of the Republican Party are more open to doing that than Democratic leadership. I mean, again, the, the left of the Democratic Party would have the best plan in terms of staving off an economic crisis. But what does the mainstream of the Democratic Party want to do more than anything else? Destroy the only creative and dynamic energy inside the Democratic Party. Right. So that, that's what I was talking about with Crystal, Michael, which is what really fascinates me is that, you know, on the right with Trump, it was a it was a real wake. People were like, whoa, something happened here. Uh, not all, by the way, as you point out, Ben Sass and others are still saying the same things that they were for many, many years. But many people sat down and they said, OK, there's been a shattering of orthodoxy. There's been and there needs to be a realignment in terms of what is the priority of actual American voters. And what what I think is crazy is that, you know, you see this behavior by Pelosi and by Schumer at the exact time when Bernie Sanders almost became the Democratic nominee. And the the true ascendancy of a left movement, probably more of this so than we've seen in my lifetime, more so maybe than in the last 80 or 90 years. How is it that they doubled down on the elite suburbanite Wall Street consensus more so than trying to help workers in this time? Well, just maybe tease that out. Well, I think it's interesting two step, though, because let's go back to when Trump is first elected in the first couple of years. Right. I mean, you have, again, some really vicious immigration policies, which certainly I would oppose, absolutely no doubt. And that's a serious argument that we need to have. But then like Trump having some good rhetoric on the economy, but a massive tax cut for rich people, you know, basically a couple of years of classic Republican oligarch policies. Yeah. So in, I think in the first phase, the Republicans were actually like, oh, we can just tell this guy he's president, fly him around and we'll chill do the same agenda. So I mm-hmm. think they had their own period where they weren't pivoting either. I think this is actually the pivot that we're seeing right now. Like this is the first moment the Trump administration, by doing something like banning missions, is doing something that actually matches that rhetoric of 2016. So I think there's a big lag time on the economic. Very smart. Dimension. Very smart point. But I, I agree. But with I, you. Yeah, I think yeah. that's. I think that's important to note. I think the Democrats are, and and look, also Trump is still trying to kick people off of food stamps as we do this. So, you know, let's be clear here that this is not a, you know, frankly, Boris Johnson is much more of a significant mover of a right wing politician to an economic left. There's still a huge amount of room for Republicans. A a judge literally just needs an injunction against the Trump administration. I think the Democrats, again, their leadership, their intellectual consensus, though, is so intellectually dead. And I, I. I honestly, this is a really, really weird poll and uh, for me to make, but I, in 2016, when I was just starting to do this stuff, basically, and I was co-hosting and had hosting days in the majority report, even it's obviously not talk radio, but that show takes open calls. And most of the calls are, you know, left people, whatever, but it wasn't to talk radio. So I talked to people like Trump and like Ted Cruz and a bunch of nutty internet Mm -hmm. libertarians, right? And I was realizing in 2016, when I talked to people who would say like, oh, no way Donald Trump's gonna win the primary. He just said something racist. I was like, "Uh, okay, I I think he's gonna, I think that's gonna help with a big Mm -hmm. section of the voters I'm talking to, you know? So, and but honestly, the Democrats have no analog. There isn't a Democrat, like what MSNBC is taking Collins from somebody who's like, you know, I'm a Democrat, but I'm behind on uh, my mortgage. Uh, you know, I'm a Democrat. And the reason I'm voting for Bernie is because I haven't had health care in years. There's no connection. I mean, these, these, fo- I think the Republicans have in some ways a more, even the most out of touch ones have 
have an in of a sense of their base in the real world. And the democratic leadership does not. No, hmm. no sense of working people. And as you put, put it, no ideas and no ideas for decades and no thought of what kind of society they would want to emerge out of this crisis, which leaves them, you know, offering like tax credits and paid sick leave with, you know, massive holes and loopholes, giveaways to corporations. Um, Michael, it's always so great to have your perspective. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Michael. Hey, it's great. Hey, guys, stay safe. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, you do Thank the you. same, brother. We'll see you soon. See you soon. All right. And we'll have more rising for you after this.